The intent of this video is to describe the usage and combat effectiveness of aircraft deployed anti-submarine MAD sensors and retro rocket bombs in World War II. This is a part 9 video in the channel series Bombers vs. Submarines Battle of the Atlantic series. As discussed in the previous videos, more U-boats were sunk by aircraft in World War II than surface vessels, as shown in this chart from a declassified 1946 Chief of the Naval Operations Report titled Anti-Submarine Warfare in World War II. All of the images in this video are declassified. An aircraft will generally spot the U-boat before the U-boat will spot the aircraft. The U-boat can either fight it out with the aircraft or dive. Either way, the U-boat will be attacked with depth bombs. After 15 seconds of submergence though, the likelihood of a successful attack is nil. This premise is validated on the data from this chart, as discussed in the channel's Part 8 video, outlining the results of 150 aircraft attacks against U-boats. The key takeaway of the data is that none of the aircraft attacks resulted in submarine sunk or damaged if the U-boat's degree of submergence exceeded 15 seconds. After about 15 seconds of submergence, aircraft deployed depth bombs are ineffective. This chart, from an April 1944 Chief of the Naval Operations titled German and Japanese Submarines and Their Equipment, outlines the path a U-boat would take during a crash dive. This chart was unpacked in the channel's Part 5 video. Anti-Submarine Command needed both sensors to locate the submerged submarines and more effective kill stores. Depending on conditions, a U-boat could be completely submerged by the time the aircraft reached the submarine for an attack run. As discussed in this April 1945, Chief of the Air Staff Intelligence Historical Division report, the Anti-Submarine Command. The aircraft had no way to track the U-boat while it was submerged. This is because radar cannot detect submerged submarines, as discussed in this section of the October 1945 Bureau of Aeronautics Naval Aviation Bulletin. The MAD sensor was developed to detect U-boats by monitoring the disruption they caused in the Earth's magnetic field. MAD is the acronym for Magnetic Anomaly Detector. Although, the outline of a submerged submarine is slightly visible if close to the surface, as shown in this image from a U.S. Navy submarine recognition manual comparing U-boats to whales. Aircraft adopted both magnetic anomaly detectors and or radio sonar buoy sensors to track submerged submarines. The MAD sensor is described in the New Technical Development section of the February 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. In the spring of 1942, aircraft had no means to track submerged U-boats. MAD booms were installed on aircraft to detect submerged submarines. MAD booms are being installed on B-18 bombers. This image shows a MAD boom installed on a B-18 bomber here and here. MAD booms were also installed on PBYs. The MAD sensor will register when the plane flies over a steel submarine. The MAD sensor weighs 40 pounds. An automatic bomb release system will be fitted to the MAD sensor, as discussed in this follow-on MAD discussion article in the May 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The MAD sensor does not project a beam like radar. The MAD sensor will only provide information when directly over the U-boat. If a bomb is dropped at the point of MAD sensor U-boat indication, it'll fall well forward of the submarine. The U-boat has no idea it's being tracked by a MAD sensor. The range of the MAD sensor is around 400 feet, as defined on this page from the August 1943 U.S. Radar Research and Development Subcommittee document titled U.S. Radar. The kill stores need to be automatically released to fall vertically at the U-boat MAD indication. The solution was to attach rockets to the anti-submarine bombs where the rockets fired backwards. The rocket-propelled bomb's rear speed would match the aircraft's forward speed. The two velocities would cancel each other out. This method also eliminated ricochets and erratic underwater travel issues. This is called retro-rocket bombing. The weapon system combination was given highest development priority and was predicted to be the number one anti-submarine weapon. The retro-firing bombs would be mounted under the aircraft wings, as discussed in this January 1946 War Department document titled U.S. Rocket Ordnance Development and Use in World War II. The aircraft deployed retro rocket bomb selected was the ship deployed Mark 20 mousetrap bomb. The mousetrap bomb was filled with 35 pounds of an explosive fill. 
Like the hedgehog, the mousetrap fuse was contact triggered, not hydrostatic. Three different rocket motor speeds were available, depending on the patrolling aircraft. This chart, from a January 1945 U.S. Fleet anti-submarine and escort of convoy instructions, outlines the lethal range of a depth bomb to a U-boat based on the type and weight of the depth bomb's explosive fill. A 35-pound charge of Torpex will be lethal to a U-boat if detonating within 7 feet of its pressure hole. Mousetrap bombs were developed from the ship-deployed hedgehogs. Mousetraps were designed for usage on smaller ships since they were rocket-fired and imparted less deck loads. A cutaway of the mousetrap bomb is shown in this image from a 1946 National Defense Research Committee technical report titled Rocket and Underwater Ordnance. This image shows the release of retro rocket-fired mousetrap bombs from a B-18 bomber. You can tell they were fired rearward since the retro bombs are well aft of the bomber. On the other hand, gravity drop bombs more or less maintain a vertical position relative to the bomber at release. Another image shows the release of retro rocket-fired mousetrap bombs from a B-18 bomber. This image shows the retro rocket bombs mounted on a PBY from Patrol Squadron VP-63. A close-up view of the wing-mounted retro rocket mousetrap bombs. PBY on U-Boat Patrol, a PBY and destroyer escorting U-541 after Germany surrendered. PBYs held 12 mousetrap bombs under each wing. Launch rails were angled to produce the best splash pattern. Three groups of eight bombs produced a pattern 140 feet wide and 40 feet long, as shown in this view. The tactics for tracking and attacking U-boats using the MAD sensor and retro rocket bombs are outlined on this page from a 1946 National Defense Research Council report, Magnetic Airborne Detector Program. A plane will mark the point of submergence with a flare. The plane will fly a search pattern if the U-boat is picked up by the MAD sensor and drop a flare to mark its location. For tracking purposes, assume the U-boat submerged speed of 6 knots for the first 10 minutes and 3 knots after the first 10 minutes, as discussed in the reference shown earlier. Keep tracking the path of the U-boat by dropping markers at the MAD pickup points. Use C markers to estimate the location for an attack. The type of attack will depend on the tactical position and the ordnance available. Depth bombs and forward-fired mousetrap bombs will not fall vertically. This will need to be taken into account. Retro bombs are released automatically when the MAD sensor indicates the plane is over the submarine. This should be more accurate as no need to estimate the U-boat's path. This image represents the plane's path in tracking a U-boat with a MAD sensor and retro-fired flares. Retro flares and markers work and behave like retro rocket bombs. They can be released directly over the U-boat. A drawing of the Mark 15 retro drift marker is shown in this image from a 1948 Chief of the Bureau of Naval Weapons report titled Aircraft Rockets. This marker is to be retrofired from an aircraft traveling at 300 feet per second. This image shows the aircraft's cloverleaf tracking path relative to a moving U-boat. The submerged U-boat is following this line. Retro markers have been placed at points 1 through 5. The U-boat will have no idea he is being tracked. Other attack rules include, after four good contact markers have been deployed, the aircraft can now attack on the next pass. If the polarity of the U-boat stern is known, then retro bombs will be released automatically at this setting. Crosswind will not cause a significant error in bomb placement. Stay with the U-boat until relieved or if low fuel forces a break in contact. The MAD sensor, coupled with the retro rocket bomb combination, showed such great promise that the U.S. Secretary of War, Henry Stimson, relayed this innovation to President Roosevelt in this March 26, 1943 letter snippet. He wrote that the U.S. had new technology at hand to combat the U-boats. He listed Loran Navigation, MAD Retro Bomb, and FIDO as his new technologies. FIDO is also known as the Mark 24 Mine and is an aircraft-dropped acoustic homing torpedo, as shown in this image. So, how effective was the MAD sensor coupled with the retro rocket mousetrap bomb in operational service? 
On February 24, 1944, PBY number 14 and PBY number 15 made mad contact with U-761 in the Straits of Gibraltar as defined in this post-war mission summary. PBY-15 marked the contact location with two smoke lights. Three more markers were dropped while the plane flew in a cloverleaf pattern. PBY-14 joined in the tracking hunt. After five lights were dropped by Plane 15, a British destroyer traveled over the light pattern and ruined the mad contact. Some commentary. The U-boat would have no indication he is being tracked by a mad sensor. He will now likely know he is being hunted by the destroyer above. Contact was re-established by PBY-15 some 1.5 miles where contact was lost. PBY-15 fired three sticks of retro rocket bombs. PBY-14 fired its retro rocket bombs also. The destroyer fired 10 depth charges 30 seconds after PBY-14's attack. U-761 surfaced for about two minutes and then sank stern first. This is an image of U-761 taken by a PBY. There were 48 survivors. This event was the first credited sinking of a U-boat with retro-fired bombs. All in all, Mad Sensor Retro Rocket Bombing System was credited with sinking three German U-boats, as discussed in the reference shown earlier. Retro bombing was overshadowed by the forward firing rockets, and I'll add Fido, as Fido was credited with sinking 31 U-boats in World War II. On April 30, 1945, a PBY attacked and probably sunk German U-boat U-326 with retro rockets. This attack is recorded as the last German U-boat sunk in World War II. Post-war, homing torpedoes replaced the retro bomb. The retro bombing combat record is less than what was expected. One reason is that the Germans changed their U-boat tactics. In 1943, U-boats tended to stay on the surface and fight it out. This would be too dangerous for a MAD-equipped PBY to attack. MAD works best in locating submarines in narrow search areas like the Straits of Gibraltar. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.